Hello, and welcome to the Nick Girls. This is episode 475. It is. There it we go. Felt like you just pushed fast forward there for a second. Just I like, mean, my brain sometimes fast forwards. <laughs> so It's been on slow speed yeah. for a couple days, but sometimes it fast forwards. You and me both. I am Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is Friday, the 28th of February. Tomorrow's uh, the 29th. It's, it's a leap day. Mm-hmm. So that's exciting. I read some totally worthless time waster article today about how leap day um, in overseas in Europe and Scotland um, and Ireland and several other um, countries was... Uh, the day that women were supposed to show their interest in men, like it was a reverse proposal oh. day. Hmm, interesting. Because it's like only happens once every four years women are oh, allowed to show their yeah, interest. Yeah, like I once mean, every four. there's that. Yeah. Oh, there was that movie with, that was uh, made about that. Like, it's a cute romantic comedy called like Leap Day or something. Oh. Leap Year, maybe. Okay, yeah. It's got Amy with the red hair um, that was in like Enchanted in that. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I like, know what you're talking about. Mid, like, I feel like it came out in, like, 2013-ish. Mm. Anyway, I feel like that's cool. the premise of that movie. So if you need a, a brainless leap day watch. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, I am on call, so if we get, if my phone goes off, I'll have to pause it, but hopefully it won't. Um, I'll make it work. And it's the first day of the new RuPaul's season 12 season 12 so that's drag awesome. race yeah that's starts tonight being recorded as we speak which is great because we're almost done with um oh uh christian siriano's uh, project project runway. runway we're down to like the last five i think or four yeah so yeah new things that's awesome good watching we started watching on netflix there's a new next in fashion show that we started watching too that has tan france from queer eye and then i always forget the the woman who's his co-host but they have a really good like fun interaction bounce back Mm -hmm. so it's interesting because they are hosts but also they judge mm -hmm. so they kind of do like the behind the scenes stuff but are also like "Mm." yeah Whereas with Project Runway, it's usually a blind judging. Like, they don't necessarily yeah. know before they see the garment who's made it. Yeah, this is very not blind judging. Except for one person whose garments always look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. They're all asymmetrical cutout mini dresses. <laughs> wonder who that is. Who could that be? Um, anyway, this is not a review of fashion television. Oh, but the Clearly. new Tim, <laughs> but the new Tim Gunn, uh, yes, uh, the cut or something. It's yeah, on Pri- it'll, be on Prime it'll be on Prime next Starts month. I think the end of yeah. So. It's a good kickoff for my birthday month. It's true. Towards the end of the, my birthday month, but still, most people just get a day. <laughs> nope, Laura gets a month. My sister takes a week. That's still more than most people. <laughs> My um, assistant principal's birthday was yesterday, and he is almost exactly one year younger than me. It's like, um, like for one month, we're the same age. Um, so I will be 39 in a month, and I had the kids all wishing him happy 40th birthday, <laughs> even though he just turned 38. Yeah. And it was hilarious. Because you're a terrible human being. Yeah, but it was so funny. <laughs> he was getting so upset. <laughs> I am a terrible human being. I told them pretty quickly that I did it, though. Yeah. I'm sure that made the kids stop immediately. (laughs) That was very funny. It was only the sixth graders, because they're gullible and they'll do anything. (laughs) Anyway. I am... Would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? I'm just going round and round and round on a sock. And this is a Winnie Johnson toe up. Um, I am knitting it out of Knit Spin Farm in the Cherry Blossom Festival colorway on size one needles. I'm magic looping this. I actually prefer two circulars, but I appreciate the cost of a single circular. So I do magic loop quite a bit. Um, one of the, the guy that's on my team in New Jersey, he recently started knitting. Uh-huh. 
he's been knitting a lot like booties and hats and stuff and he uh he was like have you tried these nine inch circulars and i'm like <laughs> yes they're terrible <laughs> for me because of the way i hold my needle but i'm gonna yeah, send him do. the couple of sizes i have because i'm like i'm never gonna use them yeah they're yours I'll be nice for him. Yeah. Yeah, for some people love them. Yeah, it's all about how you hold the needle. How you I grip your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. So I'm just going around and around and around. This is actually the second sock. Oh. So the first one looks like this. I'll probably have a blocker somewhere. I meant to grab one from my multitude, but I think it's fun. You can see it. Yeah. So yeah, it's super cute. These are for me. Um, this is the Wendy Johnson Top with gusset pattern. I've been knitting on these. I have a book fair at um, school, so I don't follow kids around when they're in the book fair. I kind of chill behind the register, and if they have any questions, they can ask. Because um, I'm middle schoolers. I don't want them to feel like I'm following them, because that's not cool. I want them to take their time. And so I sit there, and I knit on a sock. Mm -hmm. And there are actually, most of my kids are knitting right now, so um, they learn knitting. The art teacher taught them knitting, and um, a good majority of them are, I would say like one or two per class now are knitting. Um, so they come up and ask questions, and I taught a bunch how to bind off today. Aww. Because they were just tying a knot and leaving the stitches live. Oh no! So we learned about not tying knots and binding off today, which was super cute. Yeah. And we discussed marled yarns, like marling yarns. Mm -hmm. Like I showed them the tin can, uh, tin can knits hat, the snap hat, where they hold like four different strands together mm -hmm. to get that marled effect. Um, so yeah, it's been super cute. They're all knitting headbands for either themselves or their girlfriends in a lot of cases. That's cool. Because it's a high number of boys and girls. So yeah, it's opened up a lot of conversations with my coworkers about um, math and knitting, mm -hmm. um, because I've gotten a couple that have, like, not been super happy that their kids are knitting in class because they're not doing their work. If they were doing right. their work, it would be fun. Um, so, but one came, one of my male teachers came up to me today and was like, I've seen so, and he's a science teacher, I've seen so many of my kids knitting, it makes me so happy that they're doing stuff, like, that's not on social media, mm -hmm. they're not trying to do TikToks, they're not trying to play on their phones, and I would never tell them to stop knitting, and I was like, this is why you're yeah. my favorite. Um, but he's a pretty cool guy anyways, but yeah, so, um, it's, knitting on the sock also has opened a lot of discussions about... Is this the guy who does this. the hover... No, he uh, went to a different school okay. last year. all right. Um, but this is a really cool guy. He used to coach soccer and stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway. But yeah, so the first one's done. And they also like my little llama bag. I took a bunch of project bags up for them to grab. Oh, good. And go through good. as well. Um, so yeah. moving, And I took a bunch of needles as well. If you um, have, if they need more, I probably have more bags you can take. Okay. They definitely need more needles, but they'd appreciate bags. They have Ziploc bags right now. Oh. I'm sure they'd like bags Oh, that's as fine. Well. I still use Ziploc bags sometimes. They went through... I thought they were fine with yarn. They went through 10 trash bags of yarn this week. Wow. Yeah. Um, which is kind of crazy. But at so the same time... maybe we can add some yarn to your Amazon wish list. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or needles or something. Anyway, so that's the first thing that I have on the needles. And then the second thing I have on the needles is my sweater. It hasn't gotten a ton of work past last... When did we do the VKN? Last Sunday mm -hmm. I was working on it. Um, so it is below the sleeves. I think it was below the sleeves last time. Yeah, but just barely. So it's a little bit more. So maybe five, six inches at the most? Yeah. And I'm just in that part where you just go round and round and round and round. Um, this will probably be the knitting that I take to work next week because I want them to see something larger and hopefully I'll get these socks done tomorrow. But And this is for while you're sitting at the book fair. And... Yeah. Um, not following them around. Yeah. Well, I mean, but... it's not like it's big enough necessarily that you need oh. to be monitoring every aisle and stuff, no, right? No, there are no aisles. It's just one big circle. Yeah. Yeah. As as and I would hate it if someone followed yeah. me around, so... As long as you're visible and they Yeah, can they're fun. See you, then I, I agree. And then if fun. they have any questions, I'm right there. 
So, but it's also good for them because we're learning how like money works. Um, book fairs bring about things that aren't just about the fundraising aspects. Like a lot of times my kids are learning how money works for the first time. Mm -hmm. Or um, we talked a lot today about like getting a receipt for your purchase and um, not just giving people, like, all your money and having them count it out, you counting it out, and stuff like that. So there's... And looking for prices on things and finding the prices on things. So there's a lot of other things. And actually just being able to see all these books that are available yeah. for purchase and other stuff. Um, so there's more benefits to a book fair than just fundraising for the library. Because I think if it was just fundraising for the library... I wouldn't do it because I don't earn a, a, a lot of money off of the book fairs that I do. Um, especially not this one. I always looked forward to book fairs when I was Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, they get to see the book fair video, which is a different form of book talking. And they get to um, take home the flyer and mm -hmm. do that. And it's, it's an experience. Yeah. So it's not just about the fundraising aspect. Anyway, so those are the two things that I have on the needles. The sweater is being at a Broca Vintage. I'm really trying hard to use stash for sweaters this year. Um, that being said, Harrisville came out with a new yarn today that's CVM that's gorgeous really? that I want to show you later. Yeah. yeah. I like Harrisville. I do too. Um, and then, and it's like natural colors. Mm. And then, um, so I'm trying to use a lot of stash. So Barocco Vintage in a red that's at least from probably 2012. It was from Hank of Yarn before oh, yeah, she so. went out of business. Um, I have eight skeins, which should be plenty. And I'm knitting that on a size six needle. And I'm using, for both these projects, the Addy Turbo Squared. I really like the texture of those. And I think if we go to a yarn store in Edinburgh, I might pick up some more needles. Their Addy's actually doing a deal right now if your local yarn store carries the squared. Because I'm on Addy's mailing list. If, I think if you buy three, you get one free. Oh, cool. So that's pretty cool if you're looking to um, increase or change up your needles. Yeah, and these are have. Addy Rocket squared, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the offer is only good on the rocket squared, but you should see, you all should look at their website, um, for more details on that promo, but you have to purchase them through an LYS local yarn shop. Yeah. All at the same time on the same receipts, mm. um, to get the free one. So that's pretty cool too. That is it for me for knitting. I have no finished objects, but you have something new on the needles. I do. Um, so well, first I'll show the other thing. What I've already talked about before, which is um, Line and Shadow, Shadow Lines, sorry, by Suzanne Summer. Um, they just did an interview with her on the Fruity Knitting podcast, oh, okay. so I thought you might like to watch that as well. Yeah, and Fruity Knitting does some, like, beautifully made po um, podcasts, and they're, I mean, they're super professionally done. And they, they're mainly interviews. Mm -hmm, yeah, but they've interviewed tons of folks. Um, it's a very different format than ours, which is perfectly fine. And like I said, it's it's just great quality. Like they really spend time making sure that it mm -hmm. looks nice and professional. Um, if you haven't seen Fruity Knitting, you should check check their stuff out. Um, so one, two, three, four. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this is line and sh or shadow lines. I keep wanting to say line and shadow. Um, I've only added a couple inches on this since you saw it last. It matches what you're wearing today. It does match what I'm. I wear a lot of red, so uh, odds are good. <laughs> uh, so this is out of Triskelion yarn in the Alwyn Fine base. Um, these are all this information as well as everything that we talk about is on our show notes, yeah. which is found on our website, the knit girls with three L's.com. Um, I, I just haven't been knitting as much this past week. Um, well, you've been on call for a couple days. I have been on call for a couple days and, um, I worked on my finished thing as well. So, uh, so this is 
shadow lines, and I'll be taking this with me when we go to Scotland. And I then, haven't decided any Scotland knitting yet. Oh, I wanted to talk about this too. So this is the thing that I cast on. If I can make sure I don't lose my stitches. So I talked last week about uh, swatching for Starboard Rock, um, which is a Versace Knits pattern, I think. And it's sort of like a cross between uh, Hohi Locatelli's Boxy and Andrea Mowry's Weekender in a fingering weight. Um, it's kind of a, a mishmash of those two. So it starts, it has you knit both the front and the back up to the armholes flat. Um, which the Weekender does as well, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to knit it in the round. But um, it has three inches of this sort of broken rib at the bottom on and each then side. The, that also rib ha happens at the top, Yeah, it, right? it happens. It's a detail up here as well. Kind of like how the Weekender has a little detail up here. Um, but and I'm, the boxy's got garter mm -hmm, grooves there. That's true. And garter welts. So this, um, I'm going to do the ribbing separately on the front and the back, and then I'll join it in the round so it'll have a little split there at the bottom. Um, I just think I like the look of that a little better, I think. Uh, I'm almost there. This little mark is two inches, and I need to get to three. Holly and I, at knit night, we just kept measuring our stuff, hoping it had gotten <laughs> to the size that we needed, needed it to get to, but it wasn't like pure will alone wasn't making it happen. Um, so I'm knitting this out of Oasis by Strand. Oh. Okay, so it's Stranded Dye Works in the Oasis base, or it used to be Oasis. I don't know what it's called now. And it's the Ice Skating Party is the colorway. I'm not alternating skeins on the ribbing. Once I join it in the round, I will alternate um, skeins, but I don't think it's necessary in the ribbing. So, um... I'm knitting this on size 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. So I'm knitting my fingering weight sweater on a 5, and Laura's knitting her worsted weight sweater on a 6. That's pretty much how our lives work. Gage, yo. <laughs> um, we are we get vastly different gauge if you've not watched the show before. I'm a very loose knitter. And I'm not. Yeah. And part of that comes with how I hold the needles mm -hmm. when I knit. A lot of it comes from that. Plus, I think it's experience. Like, you've been knitting longer than I have, and I think that over time, I know I've loosened up a bit. So maybe, you know, in another few years, I'll knit as loosely as you do. Yeah, I have no when idea. when I started knitting socks, I knit them on size twos. I've been wearing some of my, like, old socks in rotation. Um, so, like, fingering weight, you used to knit them on twos? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, it's entirely possible that I'll continue to loosen up over time. I, I don't know. So, there's that. Um, so, the other thing, I haven't done any work on it yet, but Laura and I were looking at travel pillows because we're, we're going to Scotland, and it's the longest flight I'll have ever been on. We fly straight from Memphis to Newark, which is about three-ish hours, a little over three hours, and then from Newark to Edinburgh is about eight hours, and... Um, I think the longest flight I've been on was like four plus hours, and that was coming back from Portland, or going to Portland, I don't remember which. Yeah, I feel like it was six to Portland, but I could be totally lying. I I don't feel like it, unless we we're counting the time zone changes in there. I don't know. But anyway. It's hard to tell because we didn't do it straight, right. like on the way back. We, well, when we did Seattle, we didn't do straight. I can't remember with Portland if we flew straight. Yeah, or maybe it was Seattle. I think we flew Portland to, to like DFW. I don't remember. Anyway. But I've never been on a flight this long by a significant margin. So we were looking at travel pillows, and um, I ended up getting sort of a fairly conventional one that goes, you know, it's like a U-shape and it supports you. Oh, I did not. Laura <laughs> got a totally different one. And it's really interesting. And if I can remember, I'll put it in the show notes, but it's called like the Infinity, which I have it downstairs, by the way. Yeah. that's what I was, I got very excited. Yeah. Um, I haven't taken it out of its packaging or anything, but... Ooh, we'll um, have to play with it later. It's an infinity... It's like a giant cowl. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> That's a pillow. <laughs> um, an infinity scarf. It's like a big loop of fabric, but it's got, you know, like some cushioning and stuff in it. And the idea around it is that you can loop it around like a cowl and it'll support, you know, your neck or whatever. But also... You can, like, triple loop it to do that. Mm -hmm. Also, it's... Um, 
kind of brilliant in that it uses tension to your advantage so like sometimes it's really hard to get comfortable on a plane so with this you could like loop it around your neck and then put your arms through it to sort of pull to give you a little bit of tension mm -hmm. um, and there's like tons of different positions that it demonstrates that you can use um, and I thought oh that's brilliant you know because sometimes I have a really hard time getting comfortable on a plane because a I'm a big person I'm a large person so I take up the entire seat but also because I have boobs right so I can't just really cross my arms over my chest because eventually the tension of like my arms being held out and and down so much it it like causes fatigue in my arms and I can't really put my arms directly in my lap because I got my boobs in the way right so it's it, you know otherwise my arms end up taking up both armrests and that's just inconsiderate but I thought oh that's brilliant if I can do something like Laura's mm. um my towel your, pillow, your thing. pillow thing so I just got some basic fabric from Joanne's um, like a week ago and I'm just gonna make an infinity cowl with a little bit of interfacing in it that hopefully will do the job of the tensioning part like I can make yeah. it mimic the tension part um, and maybe it'll help a little bit anyway if you not it, it cost the fabric cost me like we can always switch six dollars too like if we're on the flight yeah. and you want to try mine we're across the aisle from each other we can always switch around too but this is my a project for this weekend it's pretty simple I just have to cut the fabric add interfacing and sew it back together so um, I did get a, a zipper in case I want to put the invisible pocket in because that's like a travel mm -hmm. thing yeah but I feel like I'm more likely to leave a scarf than I am my purse yeah. so <laughs> um, I doubt I'll use it for that but who knows anyway there's actually a knit pattern that's got that invisible mm -hmm. pocket yeah. in it, which is pretty cool so that's the thing I'm going to try to do this weekend if on call is um, kind to me. I'm also going to try to make a chicken boots bag. Oh, because she released her bag pattern. Yep, chicken Sarah Sarah like big bucket mm -hmm. style bag. Um, I forget what it's called. Let me look it up real quick. Um, so Sarah me of uh, chicken boots. She used to make knitting project bags mm -hmm. and needle cases and all sorts of cool things and she retired from that business in order to concentrate she does this thing called so so live mm -hmm. where you can if you're into sewing garments she sews different types of garments all the time and like live sews through them so if you are interested in sewing that's a great resource yeah it's just called the um project bag chicken boots project bag um is what it's called but if you're on her mailing list you can get 15% off oh, cool. um, with the code that I'm not gonna give you because you need to be on her mailing list for it but even without the code it's only like $14 and the the pattern is 27 pages with lots of pictures it looks really easy once you have you know the the, the all the ingredients all the supplies for the um, the pattern so I'm gonna try that we'll cool. see. Um, Oh, the finished thing that I have. So, this is for real finished. You'll never see it again. Aww. So, I finished the cat couch with the afghan. So, what prompted me to actually finish the afghan was there are a couple of comments on YouTube from people who are like, once you seam everything together, like the size differences, you won't even notice them, um, which is true. But I did notice that the colors that I chose were like in big blocks. Like the way that it had you put it together, because I chose solid colors, like it blocked the colors in a weird way. But I don't care. I'm not redoing it. And also, I like it. you don't have to weave in ends because you, you tack it down. It down. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm on board with this plan. So it was super awkward <laughs> trying to sew this thing down. Um, and I had to take breaks from it because it was frustrating at times, but I just took the, um, the white thread from the edging and just tacked it down all the way around, a around. Yeah. And so it's, it's completely affixed to it and it's not going anywhere. So the South Haven animal shelter just put a call out for food donations too. So we could get some food yeah. and donate that and the, and then take this with it. and yeah. see if they'd be interested in using that for adoption pictures. Yeah. Are you on their mailing list or something? Um, I'm on the Nextdoor app. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am too, but I didn't see that. 
but we're in different neighborhoods, so maybe it's just closer to you. Could be. Um, I know the Horn Lake one's by the, um, it's by the old school on the railroad tracks. Mm. I don't know where the South Haven one is, actually. I bet you it's up, um, Isn't with that the where you got the... Pearl? Was no. the South Haven one? No, that's the... Oh. Uh, I bet it's up where the library is, and that, like center complex thing. yeah because that's where the police department is and yeah water department and all that that's true library all that stuff all that jazz um so yeah that's the entirety <clears throat> of my crafting this week oh i have some spinning to talk about yeah you do um well i applied the squirrel's pantry so i'm gonna show that to y'all and then she's gonna give it to me nope they just had an update, too. Ingle Nook did. And I was good, and I didn't even go on, but there was lots of pretty stuff. Because I'm on their mailing list. So this is Squirrel's Pantry. It is. Let me hold still. So this um, is Ingle Nook? Yep. And they do bats, but also fiber. This was a bat and a braid, is what they call these. Um, it was 50% Gray Shetland, 25% Falkland Merino, and 25% Silk. I think it was 5.2 ounces the tag has gone missing all of a sudden. Um, but it is really, really pretty. Um, I got 572 yards of a two ply. Nice. Yeah. So not the best ever, but it is a nice like fingering weight. Um, it's pretty standard throughout. I'm going to knit a hat, probably um a sock head and then i'll have some leftover and i might knit like a baby sock head i feel like you could knit two sock head hats out of that oh, i probably could and you could give one to me or i could knit one sock head hat and then give you the extra yarn oh. and you could knit your or own you could sock knit head. me a sock head hat <laughs> and then keep the extra yarn <laughs> so we'll see it's i was really thinking pretty. about making this one of my scotland projects i think that's a great idea it's got a lot of color yeah and Sockhead is pretty brainless. Yep. So we'll see. That's definitely, um, and I think you knit Sockhead on what size twos? Most uh, people do. I think so, yeah, because yeah. I went to threes, I think. So, yeah, that might happen. Um, and the silk will make it nice and drapey for a Sockhead hat as well. And then the other big projects that I'm working on. Oh, crap. You okay? I just, this pattern has one knit pattern on one side and one knit pattern on the other and I just totally switched in the middle mm. of this row. Sorry, go ahead. Um, can you fix it on the next row? No. Oh, I'm just gonna, go it's, it's only like 50 stitches. Oh, okay. Only. Yeah. Um, so I got a CVM fleece last mm. year and I washed it this spring. I can and see I'm, the crimp from here. It's so I made it into bats. So this is one of the bats. Um, and I've made 11 ounces of the total fiber. I think I have around 24 ounces, I'm going to say, of fiber, of raw fiber. Um, after the washing, it was originally like three pounds. Um, and so I ran this through the drum carter three times. I have a Clemson and Clemis drum carter. I don't know why I put Clemson and Clemson on the show notes. <laughs> I'll fix that. Oh, it's Clemson and Clemis. It's been a long day, y'all. And um, so I ran it through three times. And there's still a couple... There's a couple noils that I've developed, but not too bad. I um, used the brush for some of it and then the packing tool for the rest. So I think I got less neps with the brush or like the it looks like a wallpaper, wallpaper brush, brush yeah. yeah than I did with the other so I think I'll use that because it's specifically than... mm -hmm. and I feel like that's something they discussed in the class that we took with them I don't remember but um it's really pretty though thank you it's really bouncy and airy and I've spun two bobbins with it I almost have a third if Leslie had waited another hour before we recorded tonight I would have a third Leslie got her way, we would not be recording tonight. Because <laughs> Leslie is premenstrual. I got a headache behind my eye. I'm on call. My husband decided to take apart the water, water heater. The water heater, which is right there <laughs> in that closet. Like, anyway. <laughs> but you're going through it. I am. 
Um, so these are the first two bobbins. They hold around two ounces each. Uh, I'm spinning at long draw, and these are Shocked Reeves bobbins. I'm always surprised at how, like, short and squat they look. Yeah. I'm surprised that I was only getting, like, two ounces on these when I was weighing them. Usually I can get, like, three-ish. But because it's, it's nice a, and lofty. Yeah, it's still got a lot of air in um, there. Because it is a woolen spun. They're holding around two. So I have around six ounces done. I need to get nine ounces done, which I might not hit, and that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, so I'm enjoying it. I'm having to pick out my little nips sometimes, and there's, you know, some as you spin that, you know, kind of still exist, but that's the nature of the beast. Yeah, of long trail yarn. Um, and then this will be a three ply. And I'm hoping to get enough for a sweater. Maybe the yoke will have to be in something else, like Maybe a Joanna Spring. Plan to do, yeah, like a color work that, yoke. Um, but yeah, it'll at least be the body of a sweater. So I would really like to get three sweater spins done this year. I'm sorry if I zoned out. Um, what's the intention for plying? A three ply. Okay. So, um, I will take this and transfer it onto weaving bobbins hmm. and then three plus. So I get like a pretty standard, yeah. um, jumbled mix and yeah, we'll three ply off of those. So yeah, we'll see, I do have enough bobbins that I could just ply off of these, but I want to even out my twists a little bit too, since it is long draw. And then I'll also let me know where breaking points are mm -hmm. that um, I need to fix as I apply. But yeah, that's it for spinning for me. That's a fairly big project. I still have not gotten, like this year, I've not gotten my pound a month spun, which usually is not like a hard goal for me to hit. Um, I do have like another four ounces, a braid from Hello Yarn that... When I demoed for the kids, I spun like a third of it, mm -hmm. but I haven't spun the other two thirds. So I have like an ounce and a half spun on that. But yeah, I don't know. My spinning's been a bit a little slow this spring, this winter, I guess. It's allowed. It is, and I'll catch up. I just have a lot of fiber right now. <laughs> I That's understand. Okay. I'm stockpiling it. Ooh, our Joanna Springs Bat Club came, and it's Mardi Gras mini bats. Oh, how cool. Yeah. So yours is waiting for you at my house. I forgot to grab it before I came over. They just arrived yesterday. So that is it for me. Um, I'm not doing a lot of reading. Life is busy. I picked up um, another job, so I haven't had a ton of time to read. I've been re-listening to the Patricia Briggs Mercy Thompson series because the new one comes out on the 17th of March. So I'm also trying to get Audible's doing this deal. If you listen to three audiobooks in like January, February. You I get... hit that by the second week of January. Yeah. Well, I have not. <laughs> um, and they had to be longer than three hours, yeah. but all the audiobooks I buy are like 10 hours. Mm -hmm or 12 hours, um, then you get a $20 Amazon credit on March 17th, um, which would be nice. So I'm trying to, I have, still have four more days to hit that. So I finished the first one Mercy Thompson book and I'm guessing re-listens count. Like they never really implicitly they, said they that. They must have, because like I said, I hit it by like the <clears> second <throat> week of January and I'm pretty sure I was re-listening at that point. So um, so I have like eight hours left on this one. And then I do have a four hour kids book that I can listen to real fast. And they said you can do any speed. So I might be picking up the speed a little <laughs> bit as well. But yeah, that's been my soul reading that I've been doing. What have you been up to? Um, I read a book that I really liked this week called um, The Orchid Throne, which is by Jeff Kennedy. I've read a lot of Jeff Kennedy books. Um, the Mark of Tala, The Twelve Kingdoms. Um, there's, there's, she's got several series, um, and I almost always like um, her books. So I read The Orchid Throne. It's the only, it's the first one in that series, and it's the only one out right now. The next one comes out in like April or May, um, and I really liked it. Um, and right now I'm reading Destined for a King by Ashlyn McNamara. Both of these are, um, 
fantasy, fantasy male female romance um so yeah so that's what i'm reading now and i'm listening to i'm still listening to the witches are coming by lindy west um i'm she also wrote shrill. she wrote shrill right and she's um a producer or something on the show as well and i'm also listening to something else that i can't remember oh the wicked girls by alex marwood which is more of like a um like a crime whodunit kind of thriller i guess um it was one that kobe or yeah it must have been kobe wanted to listen to and so it was already in my keep my library so i was like oh, okay i'll i'll listen to that so um i just started it so we'll see if i finish it or not because i used to be very I used to have strong opinions about not finishing a book. Oh no. Or an audio I am a book abandoner. Yeah, but I I've definitely I've gotten to that point now where there's just there's so many things I want to read or listen to that I'm I'm not going to spend time. So I just had this discussion with my kids mm -hmm. where um it's okay to abandon a book and I typically give it 50 pages. Mm -hmm. But if I abandon like four in a row, then I need to reflect on myself and be like, why am I not selecting things right. that I like? Am I not like into this genre? Am I not getting what's going on? Do I not like the way this, am I trying things mm -hmm. by the same author and I don't like the way the author writes? Like what's happening that's keeping me from finishing books? Why do I keep choosing things I don't? Yeah. Well, yeah. I compare it to dating, and right. after, like, the fourth terrible date, sometimes you got to think, hey, maybe it's me and not these people. Maybe I'm choosing the wrong people. Yeah. So. Yeah. You just have to reflect. That we reminds talk about, me of you a... Don't grow without reflection. It reminds me of a quote I saw somewhere. I think I've saved it on a Pinterest board or something, but it was like, um when you start to get hard on yourself uh pretend you're a fictional character and think about whether or not you would like that fictional character with all <laughs> the flaws and yeah. and you know quirks and opinions and misanthrop misanthropy and all that like you would be a really interesting character in a book just because you're you don't necessarily f fit society's ideals i'm gonna this could be a soapbox and i'm not gonna do that today <laughs> So, what else? Um, uh, I'm not wearing anything fibery related, but Laura's wearing I'm a sweatshirt. I'm wearing a sweatshirt from Neighborhood Fiber Company, and I love it so much. I got it at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year because it was cold. Mm -hmm. And if they have it again at this Maryland, I'm going to buy a backup because <laughs> I love it so much. It's like that soft, mm -hmm. squishy sweatshirt. Yeah. Um, and I just adore it. So, it is like my favorite item. Yeah. It gets worn a lot around my house. I don't wear it out so much because I see my kids a lot when I go out. Yeah. And it says, like, ball so hard on the back. Um, but I love it so much. Um, I wear a backpack 90% of the time. True. I should just wear it out anyways. No one can see it. When we go places, her backpack needs its own seat. It um, does when we go out to eat. But at the same Very time, important. I can always be like, hey, do you have? And the answer will always be yes. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> For the most part. So, um, yeah. So we, I don't know. I think we'll probably try to record one more time before we go to Scotland. Yeah, I think so. We um, should be able to squeeze one Because we need to in. decide what, like, knit night we're going to do so we can talk about that. Oh, yeah. Um, so that if anybody wanted to join us or meet us or whatever, yeah, you, you know, we, we at least can name one place that we'll be. Um, so we'll talk to Amy lady amy this week and <coughs> some local shops yeah. and see um when and where we'll be i know ginger twist has one monday night mm -hmm. and somebody else mentioned another one as well so um i just have to go back in the youtube comments um so anyway my husband's back he's about to start making some noise so we're gonna wrap <laughs> this up all right you guys have a lovely week and we'll talk to you next week bye y'all bye y'all